What is happening guys? Welcome back to Redbeard's Garage and this is the Northern Tool North Star E420. You might have seen our past video where we checked this engine out. This is a fuel injection 420 cc engine so it's super exciting to be able to mess with something fuel injection finally. This thing is around $600 which isn't too awful of a price seeing how a Predator 420 is $450. So you're paying about $150 for this extra technology. Now would I buy this engine if I was doing something like a pressure washer or a log splitter? I would not. You're paying for all these parts that aren't necessary to get the job done, in my opinion. But we've been trying to supercharge a 440 for a long time. And the biggest thing is fuel delivery. We always have to do a draw through setup and that is the worst way to run a boosted engine. So with this, if we can tune it out, then we'll be able to do a, a true blow through setup and make real boost. But to do that, we have to have a standalone ECU because this is like a old school EFI that you'd find in early 90s vehicles and late 80s vehicles. It can't really adjust itself. Like if we put a better flow in the air filter and a better flow in the exhaust, it's not going to compensate for those things. It has just predetermined numbers kind of set in the ECU and that's how it really runs. It don't have an auction sensor, a mass airflow sensor, uh, so it can't really tune itself and know how much more air is coming in. So we're going to solve that by partnering with Micro Squirt. They're going to hook us up with the standalone ECU and they're going to help us tune this thing out and put more sensors on it to make it truly a real performer of a fuel injection engine. But before we go to doing that, we need to make sure that the block can fit performance parts that's already on the market. Uh, performance companies that cost a lot of money to make something like a billet rod or a cam to fit a new engine and they want to know if people are actually going to buy the engines before they put all the money into research to build something like that. So we want to see if the part sitting on our shelf will fit this engine. This is Dino Cam's 308 cam. This is one of our favorite cams to run in a big block. Has a ton of power and it's great for mini bikes, yard carts, race carts, really anything you want to use. If you got a small buggy, this is a go-to cam. I would say is the best all around cam. Uh, and we want to make sure that the lobes, the journals on this cam will fit in this block. If the gear's the same size, stuff like that. Uh, with that cam, this comes with some uh, dual valve springs. We want to make sure the head can fit these dual valve springs and um, make sure that we're not going to get valve float. And then we're going to, since we're going to have the head off, we're going to pull the piston out. First off, see if it's a dish piston. Can we put a flat top in it? And then we're going to try out the ARC 6272 billet rod. The best thing about this is, of course, strength and longevity that we're going to get out of our engine. And it has insert rod bearings, just like a car would have. And... Uh, this is going to give us a ton of strength, so we're hoping that this will drop right into the block as well. The last thing is, we do not know how the ignition system works, because I haven't had it pulled apart. And hopefully we'll be able to fit this billet flywheel on there, but I'm thinking we're probably not, because of this thing being an ECU as like a CDI style ignition, it's probably not going to use this. But we can at least see if the taper is the same, we can go from there. Uh, so we also got to check this. Unfortunately, we're going to be pulling apart this entire engine. To do so and if the stuff fits we're not going to put stock back in it we're going to leave the performance parts and get ready for our performance build with the standalone ecu we will have to get a custom ground cam made later that has no overlap overlap is basically where the intake and the exhaust is open at the same time for a small amount of time on a naturally aspirated engine you want that to help draw in the next charge of fuel for the next cycle uh, but you don't want that in a boosted scenario because you're going to never really build boost in the chamber you're gonna blow it out the exhaust. So we're gonna see if Dino Cam will make us a custom 308 cam with no overlap. And that'd be huge for when we supercharge it. Let's break into this engine. We'll probably go into the crankcase first. Uh, I'm not sure. This thing, there's a lot of pieces to take off this. And unfortunately this thing will be in pieces when we're done at the end of the day, but it's all for the, uh, for the goal of making more horsepower. So let's jump right into it and get this thing stripped down. Guys, we're going to take a real quick second break from the video to talk about the sponsor, which is rbgcarts.com. If you go on there, we have a ton of stuff to help you make exhaust like this. We've been getting in, uh, we got one inch bins, 90 degree stainless bins. We also have one and a half inch. And then we have a lot of the, uh, the adapters that people wanted us to get, which is one inch to one and a half inch. We have one and a quarter to one and a half inch. 
and then we have one inch to one and a quarter and these transitions will allow you to go from one size tubing up to the next in your exhaust and also step up to mufflers just like these these are the mufflers we run on a lot of our builds and the inlet is one and a half inch a lot of people don't want to run one and a half inch exhaust on their builds uh, they want to run one inch or one and a quarter back to it so we're giving you guys the adapters to allow you to transition from one inch to one and a half or uh, one and a quarter to one and a half so you can play around with different transitions to step up your tube as you go on back from the engine to get bigger and bigger so make sure to check that out we have the lift kits for the coleman we also have the frame bushings now in stock for the coleman uh, engine cradles it is a known uh, issue, the rubber bushings that come factory in those and the MB200. You can press these in, you can weld them if you like. They're made of steel, they're made right here in America, and they get all the flex out of your mini bike frame. So make sure to check out rbgcars.com. Support your boy, support the video. So back to this E420 build. So the flywheel is different than I've ever seen. It has a bunch of different raised areas all the way around it. And then of course it has four magnets for this high output charging system, which they skimped on that. They could have put copper windings on every single one of those and gave you even more, but instead they didn't. Why? I don't freaking know. But this flywheel, this is gonna be our only issue is, can this handle RPMs? Uh, maybe, because normally the magnet that fires the coil is what is unsafe, and this one doesn't have that. So this might be okay for what we're trying to do, but uh, so far, it's just like I thought. It has a pickup. The entire harness comes off altogether. By the way, you don't have to worry about pulling it off. So I'm going to leave this on for now and the starter because you don't need to pull that off. Block has a lot of strength down here. It has no jug strength. Like it doesn't have any extra casting on it, but it's looking like a pretty decent engine and it seems like the ports are the same. So that's what we're going to get into next. I'm going to pull the head. Standard Hemi style, which did we pull this off in the video? I don't know if we did. But all we have to do is take a tin out in the center. As long as we're at top dead center, the pins will slide right out. Has the same aluminum push rods that a 670 would have. These are extremely weak, like for any kind of RPMs. It is, of course, we knew by the valve train, it's a Hemi. Hemi means hemispheric, and the valves are slanted on a slant, where a non-Hemi, the valves go straight up and down. These are slanted, which helps flow, um, but you get into more valve to piston clearance because as this valve comes down, this corner is always gonna be really close in this corner to the piston. That's why a non-Hemi, you can get away with a lot more lift because the valve is straight. You don't have to worry about this edge coming down and hitting the piston. So it's got the normal 40, I think these are 45 thousandths thick head gasket, nothing different. And it does have a dish piston with valve relief. You can see and that's why these pistons have that valve relief. It's for that valve to open and not hit the piston. It did not. I'm definitely gonna wanna check out that hog to see if it matches our new one. Good night, look at the length of those lifters. Okay, and then we can push out this. Uh, we're gonna leave this balance shaft in the original build because you'll get a little bit more low end. Like you can't bog an engine if you're slinging around weight. It's harder to bog it. Oh yeah. Rug cap. Mmm, it's probably a couple foul in the hole. Looks like it's going to be a basic 420 design. If we put a non-hemi head, we can put a flat top in it and get even more horsepower. But So now we can start checking everything. Oh yeah, the bearing came out with it. Nice. Alright, so we're going to pull out this uh, piston. Just grab under that clip with a pick, pop out that C clip, slide out the wrist pin, and there we go. Piston is out. 
Is it the same? And it is. I mean, we can mock it, but that's the fit we're looking for. There's no side to side movement. The only thing like how long is the rod from here to here? And then with the bearing in this, how long is this one? It's what we got to find out. So I took a pair of calipers and I mocked out several places of the crank journal. And it's exactly what ARC calls for, which is 1.416 of an inch um, crank journal. It's dead on, dead on the number. So that means this is good. Our wrist pin is the same size. I also mocked it out. The only thing I got to find is center to center of this original rod by torquing on the cap. And what's funny is the rod says Mars on it. You see it? Made by the same company as the candy bars. Uh, but no, we can torque the rod on. Again, check the bore and the, the bore. And then minus half of this, half of this. And then check the length. And then we know our rod length. The stock cam lobe is uh, 0.630. 0.630 dead on 630 thousandths so our cam is the same so that means we can slap this cam in and so far our rod is other than a few other things and i'm going to assume that the we're going to do it we're going to put them in but the valve springs are going to be good as well this does have the automotive style split keepers it looks like pretty heavy valve springs factory but we won't know until we fully take it apart uh, and then we could look at porting up the head the head porting is an awful factory. It's actually decent. I mean, these big boxes really flow some air, but uh, it's going to be exciting. And the question is, do we leave the Hemi head, put a non-Hemi to get even more? We don't need a ton of compression because we're boosting this engine. So actually the Hemi may be a good option, just porting it up and going with it like that. Hmm. So this does have a different side cover. I was going to test with my uh, my cutaway side cover, and I can't because the bolts don't line up over here. So that is disappointing only for the billet side cover. Really, we shouldn't get into, I mean, maybe, I don't know. We might need a billet side cover later with boost, but who knows, but right now we can't run it. I was wanting to check clearances. The only clearance I worry about is when the rod comes around it touches the balance shaft so i feel like i'm going to go ahead pull the balance shaft out and i'm going to take off some off the edge here and off the edge there just a clearance for that rod coming around so i took the balance shaft because i do want to leave this in there because you do um it's going to shake worse without this but I did grind out this is where the dipper was coming into contact. I did take out a little bit of that. So hopefully, hopefully she's all, uh, all good to go. So that's a decent amount of crank movement not sure how much but we're going to leave it for now and if it's an issue later we'll fix it so off camera i went ahead and installed the dual valve springs so everything works in this engine the only thing is on the dual valve springs it's going to be really hard to see you can see that large chunk of aluminum i've circled there the inside spring actually rides on top of it but we don't get cool bind and that's only on the exhaust the intake doesn't have it and it, everything fits just fine uh, the dual valve spring set perfect in the caps, in the uh, valve retainers, so everything's good there. So now we're going to go ahead and dress it out the rest that we can, and we'll go over what is the future that I think we can do with this engine. All right, guys, so the engine is all put back together. Everything's on but the gas tank uh, because we are going to be mounting it differently on whatever you know vehicle we choose to put this on. So uh, my final conclusion is it's nice that all the normal 420 or GX390 parts work in this engine. It's all the same stuff. Uh, flywheel cam, rod, valve springs, push rods. They're all the same size, but there's no real reason or value that I see to even buy this engine. Uh, one big downside is the ECU's all built into this carburetor. 
It's the only place that like holds all the information. So not only are you probably not going to be able to do any, you know, changes to the timing or anything like that. Um, if you wanted to go up to a bigger carb, you're going to lose the whole ECU. So it was very strange. I mean, I understand why they're doing this. It's for probably easier starting and stuff like that, but there's no way I would buy this engine at all for anything, whether it's a generator, um, whether it's a go-kart, I would not buy this engine just because you could take a 420, uh, a Predator 420 or a Duramax 440 is what I would honestly choose. And you could buy something like a 450 dirt bike fuel injection throttle body with the, with the injector. And then you could team up or buy mega squirt or micro squirt and kind of build your own ECU. Yes, you would spend a lot more money, but what this is going to do is only run the way it was planned to run out of the factory. So uh, I don't think this does have all the built parts in it. I didn't port the head. I didn't do anything like that. I kept the stock flywheel because I think the flywheel may be safe because of the fact that it doesn't have that magnet to trigger the ignition coil because that's the unsafe part on these. I did buy a throttle pedal off of um, Amazon. This is for, you know, electric bikes and stuff. Um, and I was going to try to find out the pin out on this and the pin out on this potentiometer and convert this over to a gas pedal. And it's just, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I'm waiting. Uh, we are teaming up with micro squirt to do an ECU, but I think I'm going to end up having to get a throttle body because we can't keep this carburetor because it's all electronically controlled. And the potentiometer to the carb is really slow. Like when you rev it, it's not like opening that throttle blade. And I don't know if there's a way we can speed that up. So this video is really just to see what parts fits this engine if you've already bought it i mean with that stock carb you could throw a cam in it you're not going to see its full potential but you could see a little bit you know power it's going to change where your power comes in at you know do i think it's worth doing anything no so uh hope you guys enjoyed this video it was really just to find out what fit this thing i would start it but it's going to run like trash like we could put the air box back on and stuff but it's going to run very close i mean it's going to make a little bit more power but the billet rod doesn't add anything other than strength. Um, of course, the cam is going to add, you know, change the power band. The valve spring is going to let you rev higher. We can't rev it higher because the governor <clears throat> is electronically built into the carburetor. Make sure to check out those links to the parts that fit this. And let us know what you think about this video. I know some people is probably going to be disappointed that we didn't start it, but there's absolutely no reason to. Uh, because, like I said, for one, it's not going to run any better, really, because we're still governored. We're still on the same, you know, like... Uh, <clears throat> same graph that they've predetermined in this ecu so uh but that's what fits this engine thank you guys so much for watching we love you and god bless